people always talk about how uh, LLMs can benefit from knowledge graphs because knowledge graphs can help with hallucination detection. So I created a simple example here to show how we do this with the Lego graph. So, and what I'm gonna show you is how we can extract from an LLM the 10 most expensive cars in the world and the price of these cars, right? But then after that, I'm also gonna to go to Google to check what Google says about the price of these cars. And if the price between these cars is more than 20%, then I mark these cars with uh, an hallucination object to signal that someone has to look to see who's right, the LLM or Google, right? So let me go to Allegro Graph. So here's our query called hallucination. And there's four queries, very simple. The first query cleans up from a previous run, query two uses the LLM to find the top 10 expensive cars and their price and inserts those cars and, and prices into the knowledge graph. Query three, three then um, finds these 10 cars in the knowledge graphs and asks the uh, Google via the SERP API, hey, what do you think that the price is? And then in query four, we say, well, if the difference between the price of these two cars more than 20%, then we insert an hallucination object into the knowledge graph for that particular car. So let me just quickly go through the queries. So the first one is fairly uh, simple, right? <laughs> Throw away the, uh, the the previous run that I did for this, right? So this is a simple delete query, not interesting. Query two is find the top 10 cars and their prices. And we have a special predicate that we call ask for table. So instead of doing a series of Sparkle calls to first write the cars and then for each car do another query to find the price, we can actually ask for a table directly to uh, the, uh, an LLM, right? Something like this, list the 10 most expensive cars and the prices as integers, format integers without commas and then omit the table header, right? And then uh, we take each of the names of these cars and we use the note function to actually turn the name into a, a resource and we make sure that if you have the same name, you always get the same resource. And then we insert, insert them into the knowledge graph, right? So now we have the car in, in the database or in the knowledge graph, the name of the car and the price of the car. So now the third step is that we wanna look for these prices in Google, right? So, well, first we go, we find all the cars and for and the name of each of the cars. And then for each car, we make a prompt. Yeah, what is the price of the Ferrari, right? And we turn this into a prompt. And then we have this magic predicate called ask SERP to actually <laughs> ask Google for, okay, what is the price of this car, right? And the result of this thing is gonna be in uh, the variable answer. Now, unfortunately, this answer is not a number, but actually a whole piece of free text, right? That you get back from the SERP API. So, well, sometimes uh, SERP actually will help you with the price, but most of the time you just get free text. So actually we do something kind of funny because now we use the LLM again to um, extract the price of the car as an integer from the following text, so from the answer we got from SERP. And then we have to help it a little bit by saying respond with an integer only and don't give me any text back and format something like 8 million S and then I showed us how to format, right? Because otherwise I got weird results. But anyway, so now we do, we start with the knowledge graph search, right? We use SERP for the price and then we use the LLM again to help Google a little bit of getting the prices back. And so now we have the SERP, uh, SERP prices also in the knowledge graph. And then finally, in step four, we detect and insert hallucination. So basically first we find the SERP price and then we find the LLM price for each of the cards in the knowledge graph. And because these things were strings, uh, we have to turn them into two numbers, number one and number two. And then this is just a simple formula to see if two numbers are more than 20% apart, right? So when I execute this whole thing, I can execute this, right? And it starts running. And uh, after a few seconds, this will be done. And I can go to graph, right? And in graph, right, I can do a query, like, okay, run the query, uh, give me all the triples, except leave out the label triples, otherwise I have to delete them later. And I run this query, 
right? And now I get 45 results in my database. And I can click on great visual graph. And I get a beautiful graph back. And you see, for example, here for the big Bugatti, that um, the LLM price was 5.8 million. And SERP gave me this string back. It's also extremely exclusive and expensive at only 40 units planned for production, priced at 5.8 million each, right? So this is what SERP gave us back. And it's actually the same as the LLM. So LLM probably trained on the same uh, uh, piece of text here. So it got it right here. But here we have a Lamborghini. And what we got back from SERP actually, API is actually a, a string that we just had to turn into a number. But um, the LLM price was only 4 million, right? So that's more than 20% difference between 10 million and 4 million. And so in this case, we created a hallucination object that we attached to um, the Lamborghini, right? And so that's all it is, right? So now we have in this entire uh, knowledge graph, two cars for which we had an uh, uh, hallucination, right? And now you can do a next step to see what you want to do with that, right? Do you trust Google? Do you trust LLM? Anyway, that was my demo. Please give it a try.